Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. My name is Courtney. Of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's happening, brother? Nothing. If you hear that noise in the background, it's because we are live from Salt Lake City. Beauty and Barber Expo or Barber and Beauty? Beauty Barber. Beauty Barber Expo. <laughs> I, I, get, I, I can't ever get that. You know, I always get it wrong, so I'm like 100% getting it wrong, but I never, it's never 100% getting it right. But we'll have 10 podcasts this weekend, and we're going to have 10 different names. <laughs> that, that's me. <laughs> that's what I do. Um, uh, yeah, Barber and Beauty Expo, Salt Lake City. If you guys haven't been out here, this is a really cool event. Um, it's the only really like Barber Expo that I know that's in the Mountain Standard Time. So um, somebody just commented that they're the forgotten time zone. And they have to definitely be like the least populated time zone, I would think, in the country. Right? Yeah, we were going to shout out to Tyler. Thank you so much for having us out here and allowing us to do our thing and so and we can support your thing and uh but if you haven't been out here you got to come out here not only because of the show but the the outstanding beauty around salt lake city oh my uh, gosh yeah we fall in love with this area yeah for sure i uh, i certainly will spend as much time as i possibly can in utah i get it you know i totally get it um we were in southern utah for a few days before this and it's just there's there's no place like it that I've ever seen in the world. No, no. You know, we just came back from Iceland in, uh, in June. And, you know, those are mountains. But these, I mean, is beyond mountains. I mean, it, it's, I mean, they make Iceland mountains look, look tiny. Right? And I, I, it's so, I don't know. You know, we can go on about this, and we've done it before, but you just, you can't. You can't see it in pictures. You, you can't talk about it. You, can, you have to experience it. Yeah. You know, it's like it's you just have to experience being out here. And you can't you can't you can't talk about big sky. You've got to experience big sky. You're like, geez, that's a big sky. And that sounds like the weirdest <laughs> thing you can possibly say. But yeah. it's true. Like, it's big sky, you know. Yeah. So and crazy. Today's guest, we were going to do her uh, via Zoom. And then we found out that she's uh, in Salt Lake. We're like, hey, let's hold this up. You know, let's do it live. Because when you do it live, the energy is so much different. The just the conversation's a little different. You know, you feed off of each other. The the emotion, all of it's a little different. So you know, we, we were happy uh, happy that she, uh, uh, and plus her uh, her right hand man could be in the conversation as well. So uh, you know, we were happy that she was able to make this happen. Yeah, we're excited to we are excited to have you guys. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Um, so today we're going to talk to Jenna Puzio and Corey Kaylee, and um, they uh, have a company called Fill Your Is it Fill My Books? Fill Your Books. Fill Your Books, and um, you know who doesn't need help there? You know, oh. so I want to get into the conversation and see how they can help the industry because you know we're big fans of anybody that's enriching the uh, the industry. So, so Jenna and Corey, welcome to your day off. Thank you. Thanks Thank for having you. us. We appreciate you getting us in person. We. Uh, we agree. In person definitely gives you a different a different energy, but we're happy to be here for sure. Yeah, for sure. We yeah, can talk thanks. about you know the, the noise and stuff and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, but <laughs> you guys are correct at the mountains. The photo does not do it justice. You have to come see it yourself. That's what we yeah. tell our family. Like, get on a plane, come see it, because I'm not sending any pictures. It's you, not you, worth it. Yeah, exactly. You can't experience. You can't see it. You have to experience it. Like, yep. there's just like. Have they listened? Uh, some. Some of them, some. yeah. It's always like... The, the, what she meant to say was the important ones. Yes. Right. <laughs> Mom, sorry. Mom hasn't been out here yet. What? Uh, <laughs> you you know, mom, mom might not leave if she comes out here. It's true. It's true. How long have you been out here? Six years now. And Mom still hasn't visited? Stop. She'll get so upset. Oh, <laughs> come on, Mom. <laughs> oh. She doesn't like flying. Oh, there's that thing. Uh, she should buy an RV. I, that's what I said. Take a road trip. Yep. It is a nice drive. That's how we got out here initially. We just packed up our car and drove out. It's really pretty. Yep. Yeah. Origin story of fill your books. Yeah. Origin story of fill your books is was the drive out here? Well, kind of. We 
moved out here on a whim. He came out here. He was like, I love it. Let's move out here. A couple weeks later, packed their bags, came out. I was doing hair at the time in New Jersey, so obviously I came out here. We didn't know a single soul, so I was like, I need to get my ish together, if you will. And when we got out here, his, we came out here, he had clients for his own work. When we came out, that ended up falling through, like, right when we got here. And we were like, we can't go home with our tail between our legs. We're not going to do it. We need to figure it out. So I really hit the ground running, doing what I knew how on, on Instagram. And Corey's from the digital marketing, media buying, copywriting space. And he was like, I'll help you set up an ad. Like, let's figure it out. And before you know it, I got really busy and then girls around me started asking me what are you doing I started teaching some local classes and then I did an online class and it went viral and now it's a whole mastermind and that's how fillyourbooks.com was born my through my kind of sink or swim situation well, yeah. well, a lot of times there's, through uh, adversity like that you know things shine or things come through that you know nor, that you just discover yeah no you have to be ready it, and this is what we realize working with thousands of people is you have to, the, the person has to be ready to do it. Like you have to be in a mindset. It doesn't necessarily mean you are at a point where you might need to go live back home in your parents' basement, which we were at that point, but you just have to have that mental click of I'm sick of where I'm at right now and I, and I want to make it through to the other side. There's an old adage that says that if you want to win the battle, burn the boats. Yep. Yeah, that's right. a really good one. I had a tennis coach growing up. And uh, he always told me a setback is a setup for a comeback. And so it's nice when you're in that kind of back against the wall situation. I think it um, it just forces you to yeah, sink or swim. So it's cool. I love that, man. And then, were you guys nervous that you were you had to work together or had? We, we're best friends. We I mean we we told you guys we're high school sweethearts. We've been together for almost 12 years now. Yeah. Um, I think that's something that we actually do a very good job at. I like to pat ourselves on the back. One thing we did realize was we have to, we separate offices is a smart move or else no work gets done. But yeah, we, we enjoy working together. We kind of are on separate ends of the business. So it we don't really step on each other's toes, but we love working together. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. So fill your books. Like what was like, what was the motivation behind it? What, 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 and I don't mean this in an offensive way, so sure. don't take it that way, but like, what made you the expert in that? Sure. I, like I said, it was, it, I don't, and I think that's the beauty of it. I wasn't an expert. It was just, I realized if I didn't share this thing with other people, I would be doing a disservice in the entire industry. It was, I went from working in commission salons, not that there's anything wrong with commission salons. I think the right leader, they're a great space. I was in ones where I wasn't treated well. I didn't enjoy my job. I came over here. I kind of learned what it was like to be independent, but like that fire that I had when I went to hair school, when you're so excited, you're like, I love this. This is my craft. I want to do this every single day. When you hit the ground running and you really, you like tr are trying to build a clientele, you're in, a, you know, you're an assistant, just like getting the shit beat out of you for lack of a better term. And it's like that, the fire starts to dwindle down. And once I kind of crack the code of like, oh, I understand how to have, how to make a connection with a potential client. I get what it takes to find somebody and make them a client, a, re a returning client from step A to Z. And it excited me again. And I was like, other people need to know about this because I was working with so many people who I saw that light just like dimming down or they, the business was bogging them down and they, they loved what they did, but they really didn't have a grasp on the business side. And I've always been passionate about the business side, more so in like, how do I give a great client experience? And I think that's why that attributed to like why my methods worked well. But I was like, if I could just teach this to other people and I can help one person go be happier in their career and then they go home and they spread that joy and love to their kid, that kid's gonna go be nicer to someone else on the playground and more just spreading joy of life doesn't have to suck. Like you can get in the driver's seat and take the reins and it's not just waiting and sitting for a client to walk in or call in. You can go find that client and, and have control, just like you have control over how well or much you know in your craft. Yeah. So also, more so just spreading the joy. Yeah, and back to your point about like being an expert. When we first started, it wasn't like we were like, hey, we're these guys, listen to us. It kind of was more of an accidental snowball effect. And then what I like to believe is like evidence kind of validates expertise. So after we had 10 people who were helped, 50, 100, 200. It's like, okay, we have the evidence of this that supports the claim because I, I think anybody can make a claim, like I can do X, Y, Z, but then what's standing behind the wall, right? Sure. And so as that started to build and that evidence started to establish, it, w it wasn't even our own words. It was like our yeah. clients and students started saying, hey, they're the people for this. And we were like, I guess we're the people for that. 
it wasn't like we're going to build this thing. It was literally like, all right, I guess we have to go put this together now because we have more people. And so it just kind of fell what, in our lap. Yeah. What was the aha moment? You know, like, I think it was that for our first, like, we did a one-time class online. It was like a boot camp, and it went viral. And you could, I'll let you tell that story of. Yeah, we kind of put it out there with no expectations, and then um, we started ha having some students enroll. But I think the moment that was the big aha was our first success story that came back. And, um, you know, I'll never forget, she was a, she was a single mom. She had a little... Uh, in garage salon because she had to be home with her son who had some special needs so she couldn't really go out but for her um, it was really challenging to get clients because she's like people don't want to come to my house it's kind of weird to sell myself I can't do the whole let me take videos and photos and show this place because it's like my living room than my garage and so she needed kind of more of an unconventional way to grow long story short she goes through our stuff we help her out and then she posts back she's like hey I've been with you guys for a week I have 10 new people on my schedule like this is insane and um, that was like that, I still get kind of like goosebumpy from that because that was that moment like, hey, this is beyond like our little ecosystem now. She has light at the end of the tunnel. She's able to build this thing. Something that admittedly she was like, I was about to close this down is now coming to light. That was our big aha moment. I think the motivation just came from that. And then it felt like every single day after that, another person, another person, another person, um, then someone's like, I was able to buy a new house. I was able to move. I was able to put my kids in this school. And that just like really fueled our flame um, as far as like the start of the aha moment. I mean, that's pretty incredible to be able to have this kind of, uh, I guess, comments on, on people that you've helped. You know, I bought a, I was able to buy a house. Or I, mean, I have goosebumps just thinking about it. it. It's the craziest thing. And that's, I never thought I'd be sitting in a spot to say that we've helped somebody do that so like i mean and we've had multiple people post like in our like in our group in our community talking about buying houses and then a thread will start where people are like i'm building mine and it it doesn't sound real saying it out loud but. and i do want to mention too it's like it would be easy to take the full credit for it but yeah. to credit those people they got out of their comfort zone. They started building habits and systems in their life that wasn't the usual for them. And they took action as well. So it's really like a 50-50 relationship. I mean, you can what, like lead a horse to water but can't make them drink type deal. Yeah. Um, you know, these are great people and they're, and they're doing what they have to and they're changing their lives as well through their actions, beliefs, you know, kind of man in the mirror type thing. So it's really incredible. That's our, our big motto is like we, we give you the tools, but you're building. You're building the house. You're going to have this skill set for the rest of your life, really. That's right. a, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, you're no, so, so let's let's talk about what is Fill Your Box, right? I mean, we hear it. Sure. But, but what is it? It's really like, I would say consulting and education would be a good umbrella term. I mean, I could go on for like years about the ins and outs, so I try to encapsulate it in an image that people could kind of grasp. I say consulting and education, so um, we give you all of our proven processes, frameworks, walkthroughs, trainings, um, and then we support you through it, right? We hold you accountable, we audit what you're doing, we point out what you're doing right, let's double down on that. We point out what you're doing wrong, let's remove and fix that. And it's kind of just really a, a coaching and collaborative process. That's probably the best way to summarize it. Yeah, our big motto is attract, connect, retain, right? So that's really the three key pieces that we're teaching people. We're teaching you, how are you gonna attract new clients? How are you gonna make a connection with them in order to actually get book them on their first appointment? Then how am I gonna retain that, right? So those are the three key big pieces that we're teaching. Yeah, people need to know who you are because you could be really good, but people don't know who you are, you know? Then once people know who you are, you have to be able to communicate, right? Because you're most likely, especially now and moving forward, not the only person in your vicinity that does what you do. So now you have to be able to communicate. And then once you have them, you have to be able to back it up, right? And like you made a promise, now you have to keep a promise so you can keep them. Communication is like, that's my baby when I hear communication, like that's what I love. We are, we go very deep into, I, and I know sales has like a, it's like a dirty word, but it's really just how do we communicate with people? Because in the world of social media constantly changing, what's the new trend? What's the new app? That's always going to be changing, but what's never going to change in our industry is communication, whether that's through an online conversation or it's in person. That's the thing that keeps us, like what makes you different from me and what makes the next person different from the uh, salon down the street. It's 
how you communicate and the way that you communicate is unique to you. So it's kind of finding that voice while also following a, a proven structure that we know works. What, so talking about communication and talking about how to set yourself aside from other people, like what are you guys recommending or, or like what are you looking at to say, this is why you're different? Like, you know, like there's so many like lived in hair artists now. So, you know, what's to, what's to separate me from you know, Katie or, you know, right. someone that's, you know, that's nearby. I think it's just about one, not being afraid, but two, like not being so stuck in the structure. So, sorry. <laughs> so not being so stuck in the structure. Like, I feel like people think that there's this exact formula when really it's nothing that's too deep. It's really just, I like to say, do the thing that other people aren't willing to do. You'll see so many times where it's like in people's, Instagram bios. It's like no DMs, just go to my website to book, fill out this form. It's very just like people try to automate a lot of things. And yes, that helps in business, but like invite people to send you a DM, talk to more people, go message someone and thank them for liking your photo, like kind of going the extra mile, being a human being on social media and being social on social media. That's what's going to make you different. Same thing with posting too, right? Like, and to your point, everyone's doing lived in blondes, everyone's doing lived in hair, whatever it is, what's going to make you you is being able to actually share your voice, whether it's in a video or whether it's in a caption, not just trying to do what you think everyone wants you to, what everyone wants you to post or what you think is going to do well. It's being genuine to who you actually are because then you're going to attract the clients who are like you. And who doesn't want, not that you want your clients to be like you, maybe you don't, whatever, but like, you want to be able to have a conversation with these people and they're in your, in your chair. You want to be able sure. to have similarities, connections, because that's what's going to make them want to stay with you. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of talented people out there, which is great. I love the age of social media where we can just go get education and a lot of people are great. So what's going to make you different is who you are as a person. So I'm going to back up a little bit. You mentioned that when um, you're working with someone, you'll, you'll double down on what they're doing right and try to remove and uh, fix what they're not doing right. So this is kind of more of a hands-on versus like watching a video and, and, and yeah, trying to do what you say. Yeah, it's, it's really like, it's really a hybrid approach. So it's like, here's what we do. Now modify it to your specific business. Now start implementing it. Let us review it. Let us get in there and kind of pick it apart. And then we give you our custom recommendation and then you go back and do that. So really like little five and 10% shifts. So it's, um, yeah, it's not just like watch this thing and it's not just, hey, we'll just do it all for you because the truth is if you do want to build something great, no one's just going to do it for you. It's a hybrid approach, right? So it's like we know what we're doing. We have it proven, but now we have to prove it for you, which is the teamwork process. So, yeah, it's in depth in that sense. I love that. I, oh, God, yeah. I do also want to kind of also sidestep back to where you mentioned communication and like what makes you stand out. I think a perspective shift is really needed. So... When you're going, in my opinion, when you're going out and building a business, you either have a chance to get a customer or a client, or you have a chance to get a relationship. It's kind of like what you guys are doing with the podcast here. We could either be a podcast guest, or we could be a relationship with you. And so, if you build a relationship, we send more people, we promote your brand, we talk highly about you, right? And then same thing, vice versa. If we're just a podcast guest, it like starts here and dies today. And I think a lot of people in business see that as well. And then you see people running into like the, well, like how much does it cost and what's your price? And then we get to this transactional kind of space and that kind of sucks. So we think of more of a transformational space, take longer, acquire the relationship and the relationship is really what feeds like the money, you know? We see our students, they get so wrapped up where a person will message them and be like, what's your price? And then the person, then the stylist will say the price and then the conversation just dies out and, they're, and then they'll come to upset and they're like, what happened? I don't understand. Like, how how can I be transformational when this person is now being transactional? And that's kind of what we do is we teach you not how to avoid those questions because let's be honest, it's that's all they know. Like, our potential clients, they're not, they didn't go to school. They don't understand what goes into it. And, and like, us going online and talking about this is how much my box of gloves costs, like, isn't going to make them feel good. And, it's, and I don't think it's going to make them want to pay. What's going to make them want to experience what you have is building that relationship so our just where the, what we like to do is kind of how do you guide that conversation instead of avoiding questions that are kind of unavoidable just mm -hmm. how do we take control of that conversation so that we can lead it in a better direction because they don't know what they don't know are you wanting to give something now 
Sure. Okay, so like if I were to email you and I go like, hey, how much are your highlights? So, because that's gonna be a normal client sure. conversation. Yeah. So, so what, I use the word rebuttal, but what's yeah. your rebuttal to that? Sure, it would be like, hey, Susan, I'd love to help you. I really wanna help you achieve that look. Depending on your things like your hair history, what it is that you're looking for, I just wanna ask you a few questions. That way I can give you an accurate price quote. Is it okay if I ask you a few questions? Now we're starting a conversation. Nine times out of 10, someone's gonna be like, yeah, sure. You can ask me a couple questions. If that person says no, now you can at least disqualify that person. Be like, okay, if they're not even willing to have a conversation, I probably don't want them as a client. But now if now that door is open. So if they say, yeah, like you can ask me a couple questions. Now we move into like a consultation portion, right? Now that's when we're gonna talk about, okay, awesome. Did you have an idea? Like, did you have an inspiration photo in mind? Or if you're really starting from scratch, have you ever colored your hair before? And really just go through some of those questions that you'd be going through in a consultation. And then towards the end, that's when we can talk about things like Budget. That's when you can talk about pricing because now you've already gotten them quote unquote bought into your process, right? Now you're, I like to call it flexing your knowledge. You're showing them, hey, this isn't just a transaction. I'm taking my time. I really want to do a good job. I want to make sure you're happy. I'm going to be throwing in extra like buzzwords and key phrases to let you know I'm taking care of the health of your hair. I'm going to make sure I'm using the right product. I'm going to make sure we work with your exact hair texture, things of that nature. So then subconsciously that client's like, oh shit, like this person knows what they're talking about and I want to go with this person instead of just being like, it's 250. Right. Think about how different that conversation is just by asking a question and that's kind of what we like to teach them is continue to ask questions because that's what you do in person. Right? A thousand percent. I mean, as you were explaining oh, I'm in. that. Yeah. You know I'm in, right? Yeah. 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 I'm in. <laughs> yeah, as you were explaining that, I was already... <laughs> yeah, I, I, as you were explaining that, I already felt like the, the the consultation or the appointment already started, and I'm already getting a much uh, added, or it, it's worth a lot more already because of the consultation. Exactly. Yeah, and if you if you look at like the dynamics of services versus products, like this monster can it's kind of full. I don't know if the camera can see it, but that's like a product on a shelf. There's a price. It is what it is. The value is established however you establish it. But if you look at the dynamics of like most successful service industries, even outside of this one, all, all of the top players are taking that approach of, well, I, I don't have a quote until I understand you and what you want. You know, if I'm a landscaping company and I'm doing a, a $1 million redesign in a backyard, how do I know until I walk the place, until I figure out what kind of soil there is, you know, like what the neighbor's fence looks like. And so I think in this industry, that's why I always go back to like rewire the beliefs and perspectives. If you're just looking at it like your service is a monster can on a shelf, then that's the box you limit yourself to, right? So everything starts with how do you view it and that, and that opens up the playing field that you play your game in. And I always like to say, imagine you build that connection. Think about how much easier it is to retain that client now that they already know, like, trust you before they even walk in the door. Now you're like, fighting, not actually fighting, but now you're fighting less on that first appointment to like really wow them because it's like they already know you by the time they come in. So now that because you've already been asking, right, that ask at the end of buying product, rebooking, reviews, referrals, it's going to be so much easier because you already built up that relationship with them. Yeah. And like business, it's like it's either more work now or more work later. I'd prefer to do more work now because usually when you're doing more work later, A, it's reactive. So like yep. I'd rather be proactive versus reactive. But then B, like you already got past the hard part. It's like if you think about it like a scale, like for the camera, if you're, if you're watching and not on audio, it's like scales one through 10. It's like, this is before the appointment, the middle is the appointment, and then after the appointment, right? People are putting so much pressure on that dollar sign where the money's coming in on that appointment day when it's like, let's spread that energy out a little bit. Mm. Let's put a little energy before they come in. Let's spread that energy out after, making sure 24 to 48 hours after, are you texting them to ask them, hey, we did a big change. How are you feeling about your hair? Giving yourself the opportunity for a fix if need be. Or they love it and you, that's when you can ask for that review. That's when you can ask for that referral, right? When you spread it out, it's let, it seems like more work up front, but it's not because now that client's probably going to be retained and you're less, you're on less of a hamster wheel of like, I got to find a new client. I got to find a new client. My clients aren't coming back. Well, well you're always in the like, if you're playing the back end of that scenario, yep. like you're always playing to keep your client. Yes. Right. And, 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 and if you have a hundred clients, <laughs> if you have a hundred clients, then you're fighting a hundred clients. Yep. In, instead of like, you know, once you do the work at the front now, you're not, you're, you're, you're there. Exactly. You're golden. Yep. Right? We like to say like cast a big net, right? Because you hear a lot of term, you, the ideal client, right? 
which I like it. I get it. Like you should be working with the clients that you like, but if you're in a spot where you're like, I need clients like yesterday, or if you're just like in a hustle mode, cast the big net, bring in as many people as you can. Then you can decide once, cause it's like supply and demand, right? If your sure. demand is low, but you want to like to pick and choose who you're working with, that doesn't really work. Yeah. Your demand needs to be higher. Then you can be like, okay, now I have options with my pricing. Now I have options with the hours that I'm working. Now I have options with who I'm working with, the services I'm doing, right? So depending on where you're at, my big thing is like cast a big net, get as many people in the door as you can. And then that's when you can start really like retaining that core group that you really want to. I, that's actually one of my pet peeves. I'm glad that you kind of brought it up. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's, just it's, just it's, the it's, conversation it's, that we're having yeah. as an industry and like, and like, you know, you have first year people that have, you know, 18 hours in a day to fill yep. and they're like mm, mm, I don't wanna mm, yeah, it drives also, me nuts it's all supply <laughs> and demand it's like if you look at Apple when they launch a new phone the reason they have people lining up outside the building and they literally have less phones than they could sell is because the demand's there right so then they could be picky well we'll make the new phone 1400 right because they have that ability you have to earn that ability first right yeah no 100% I, it's there and it's there's I tell this to the students too because I lived it right fill your books was made off of me and it was I didn't have anything different in fact I think I had way less than most I had no clients I had no money I no knew nobody and it's like it's just your mindset and your perspective that's going to get you there it's the lens that you're viewing your life and career through it's like the person that's willing to get outside of their comfort zone the person that's willing to be like you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna take it all and then I'm gonna really I'm gonna get my demand up and then I'm gonna really perfect it from there you're only doing yourself a disservice by trying to be picky and choosy up front. And honestly, it's a little like judgy. Like when I put it in, this, in the perspective of this, the students, I'm like, you can't yeah. just say like, I wanna work with this person, not this person. You don't know until they come in the door. You have no idea the opportunity that you're, you're missing out on. What if that person is a great person and they go and they refer, you know, three of their friends and then those people, like you just don't, you just don't know. So yeah, I give yourself as much opportunity as you as can. As a as a salon owner, or um, I would I would want to bring you guys in to, to educate my whole staff because <laughs> you know we do I, do I, that. You do do that. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a great advice. I mean, that's a great service to the industry. Um, and it's just the two of you. Uh, are you guys? Is it hard, when a salon comes in and hires you, is it hard to try to, to observe the whole salon or do you find they generally have the same habits? Because it's, it's, it's interesting. You always, yeah, when you walk into a business, like uh, the team's always going to be a reflection of the leader, right? So that's the first thing you have to fix. It's almost, almost as like a bottleneck, right? And then, so you look at whatever the leader's doing, then you'll see the reflection. Um, and then like, you have to fix that first. I made a video a while back that kind of went a little popular. And it was, um, you know, if you're showing up late, you can't expect people to show up on time. If you're not putting in extra hours, it's really hard to preach it to somebody else. And you can, but then it feels also unethical. And then people also are judging your behavior too, right? And um, I, don't, I don't have kids, so I'm not gonna go too far down the rabbit hole, but I'm assuming like, you know, if you see a kid that's put together and respectful and has good awareness, I'm sure the apple didn't fall too far from the tree, right? And so same thing in business, you look up the line. So that's always the first thing to fix. Um, so that's kind of how we approach it. There's uh, there's salons and stylists that come like the whole spectrum, right? But something that I am, would love I brought up commission salons earlier and I had to say like nothing bad on commission salons because there's that bad rep, right? Of like toxic salon owner, toxic salon, whatever. I just think that there's a big divide between owner and stylist. And owners are like, they just want to be on their own. I can't find people who want to work. And then there's stylists who are like, I, I want to work, but I can't find the right owner. And it's think, I, I think what is happening is that we need to, owners and stylists, owners first because they're the leader, we need to realize that we're playing on the same team. It's very like, feels like we're on opposite sides of the board and in order for everyone to be successful, we need to show up on, this, on the same team. And, and like Corey said, it's just, it's salons, it's a reflection Which Corey? of the leader. This one. Uh, the important uh, one, not me. Yeah. The important one. Yeah. <laughs> the one with the other beard. Yeah. That's what I said when we walked in. I was like, Corey's the one with the beard. He was like, me too. I was like, okay. yeah. Yeah. Always. Always. So, so, Jenna, were you like this? 
for the lack of a better word, were you this aggressive like when you were living out east or was this something that, or did you kind of feel like you were in like a sink or swim kind of situation? In a different way. Um, I, like I said, I, I did it like a two year like brutal apprentice assistantship, if you will. And I was always, even in hair school, like really aggressive in my craft and just my guest experience. I just loved the industry. Corey can attest, like in our first apartment, I would just come home, I would whip out the mannequin head and be watching DJ Muldoon video. Shout out DJ Muldoon, love DJ, him. DJ, love that guy. Um, and I would just be in it, immersed. I was at my assistant's, I would be in on my days off, getting doing blowouts on my friends. I'm, I'm, I burnt my sister-in-law's hair off. Sorry, Kara. I was just really, really practicing, and I went in every single day. So I did really have that, but I had the comfort of knowing people, right? So it was like I was I was comfortable, like, texting someone and being like, hey, can you come be my model? I would, like, talk to people out and about. So I, I had the comfort of, like, a somewhat of a circle. So it was, like, comfortable just being home. I think what really, like lit the fire like I said that that sink or swim was just being in a completely new environment at 20 years old not knowing anybody and also like I don't really go out or I'm not a social butterfly coming here I was like oh man I'm gonna be like out with people (laughs) But, (laughs) but I that's what really forced me to get creative with how can I connect with people because I knew that like if I just have conver- as many conversations as I can. It's a numbers game. I'm going to book people. So it was just figuring that out. But, yeah, I think I've always had a, a fire. Do you think? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> that has always been in there. That's cool. I mean, what what a, what a testament to you. and Because and, I didn't have that. I didn't, like, like, like I, I wanted to learn my craft and do my craft, but I wasn't going the extra mile to do it necessarily, you know? I think I just had something to prove. I, like wasn't supposed to go to hair school it was like I had I lied and told all my friends I, w- I was going to college because I I did well in high school and I was like should have not should I, I shouldn't have but should have gone to college and like get a real education or what are you doing going to hair school so I I had something to prove and I was like I'm gonna make these people regret making me feel bad <laughs> right about going to hair school yeah my sister's a doctor um so it was like I, I was following the path, but I realized I was like, I don't want to go to college. Like I don't actually like school. Like I'm okay at it, but I don't want to go to college. So thanks to him, he stuck around home, and I was like, well, I don't want to leave Corey. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bad at school, so I'm just a bad influence. <laughs> well, and and you didn't, uh, you know, get yourself in a massive uh, school loan debt either. Exactly. Exactly. No school debt. My sister cannot say the same with her medical school. <laughs> no, heck no, right? <laughs> and yeah. it's like, it's funny, like, with them, like, you know, when we were kids, it was like, go to become a doctor and become rich. And now it's like, your bills are so high and the, and, and the insurance companies are paying a lot less. But that's Don't go to college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I don't know if I recommend that. Right? <laughs> but it's not for everyone. No, yeah. it's not for everybody. A hundred percent. Right? No. It's not for everybody. It doesn't have to be the path. But the, and uh, but again, it all goes to your perspective, right? If you go to hair school, we all went to school, right? And we all know that a large percentage of the class didn't do much with what they with what they learned, or they were just like messing around in class. And I always I never understood. I'm like, are we not all paying to, paying to be here? Like, right. <laughs> I don't get it. So it's like, or you can go to college, and the same thing happens. It's the people who have a drive and a an end goal in mind. And it doesn't mean that you need to know the exact way to get there. It just means you are willing to be uncomfortable every day in in the direction that you want to be growing in. As long as you have that, you're golden. I mean, that's that's such wise words, you know, because I certainly know we've talked about it too. It's like, you know, there is no growth without that uncomfortable. No, not, not at all. Like I've had, I've just witnessed it from my perspective, like, and just to brag about you a little bit here, if I can, like Jenna, Jenna's built a seven-figure business by her mid twenties, and if you look at like what she goes through behind the scenes to get there, you could place so many of those items in being uncomfortable, right? And uh, and like she said, no degree, no special experience, and so I think it's powerful. Like, I think a lot of people have the opportunity to be uncomfortable. Maybe you are right now, and maybe you don't see it as a positive. Um, but I think it's like the best thing that can happen w- within context. Yeah, and, and, but like uncomfortable could just mean like pulling out the mannequin head when you don't really feel like it. Like you're like, I want to chill out and have a glass of wine and watch Netflix. But it's like, you know what, for one more hour, 
I'm just gonna go work on the mannequin head. Or it's like, you know what, like how I did. Today's my day off, but I'm gonna go do my friend's hair in the salon because I'm assisting. Or, you know what, this person liked my photo, they have a pretty cool profile on Instagram, I'm gonna go message them and see if they wanna be my client. You know, like, it's just doing little things every day. I'm uncomfortable asking this person to rebook. Ask them to rebook. Every question you don't ask is a no. Like, just always be willing to do, I don't know if you guys know Ed Milet, but he does like power of one more. It's like just one more rep, one more, like just keep doing one more. So uncomfortable doesn't mean you need to be like, I don't know, walking on hot coals like Tony Robbins or whatever, right. but it could just be doing the thing that you don't feel like in the moment, just a little bit. And it's not about changing your life overnight. It's just about doing the little things consistently. It's like going to the gym. You don't just go to the gym for 10 hours in one day and be like, where are my abs? Like, it's just, you go for like 30 minutes, four or five days a week, and you do that consistently and you'll start to see change. Are you still behind the chair now? So right now I'm actually not. As you heard, I'm very passionate about guest experience. And I was starting to realize, like, as I was juggling both businesses, I was like, I'm, my guest experience is going to start to slip if I don't figure this out. Um, and Fill Your Books, I feel like, is an opportunity that's once in a lifetime right now. And I, mm-hmm. and I have hair and I do my friend's hair and I, I still get my, my skills in when I need. But I wanted to give my full energy and attention to the students of Fill Your Books just right now. She burned her boats. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I got to do it. Right? That's awesome, man. Yeah. We were, uh, the, the word change and, and what it means to me and, and kind of how it, it, it changed my perspective. Change. Here we go with change again. Yeah. Is that for a long time, I thought change was what was next. But I realized that change was like giving up a belief system. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're big on the belief system. I always like, you always can kind of like go down the chart of your reality that you have is based on your behavior, right? Because your behaviors, let's say like your action steps and what you're doing. And then your behavior is influenced by your beliefs, right? Like, so what do I believe is going to uh, influence what I do? And then you can even go like a layer deeper, which is like, what is my identity? And then that's been formed through like the people, places and experiences in your life. And so when I'm working with people and I notice fundamental blocks, I always like to go back to inner work and figure out like, why do you believe X about yourself or why is this true, right? It's like, well, mom told me or this thing happened and that made me believe this, you know? And so going back through your life and picking that apart is really important too. I think for a lot of people who may feel stuck and want to grow to the next level, start to peel the layers back. Sometimes it's hard to just like start implementing a new habit when you have shit deep down that's holding you back, sure. right? And so uh, climbing back through that kind of subconscious ladder is really powerful. That's the first thing that we teach in Fill Your Books, the first module, if you will, is mindset. Because it's like, if that's not good, good luck with the rest. Because it's like, I can teach anybody how to do all the things that we teach, but it's what I can't teach is belief, perspective. And like Corey said, a lot of times it's just, you've been, like if you're in the spot where you're at, it's because you've been doing certain things a certain way, the same way over and over again. So, and that's what's going to form the belief, like Corey said. So it's just a matter of kind of changing those daily habits a bit, trying to change your thoughts. It's a, we're big, firm believers in, I, I was like say, you don't just have like a little man running around your head, like telling you things. It's you telling you those things. So you have the power to change the way that you're thinking. You have the power to change what you're doing in a second. Like to your point of change, if you're scrolling on your phone and you don't want to be scrolling on your phone, you want to be practicing or whatever, and you catch yourself, you have the power to turn it off, flip it down and be like, you know what? I'm going to go do this thing now. But what we do is we see that we like tell ourselves that and then we're like, oh, whatever, I'll start tomorrow. And what is that doing? Just it's like a berm on a track. You're just digging that thought process and that belief system deeper because now you're telling yourself, I can't do things. I can't put things down. I can't finish things, right? I, I struggled with that all the time. And I, what I've realized is that the more I just take, oh, I have the power to control and the more that I can ch- change those habits, the more that my beliefs change and the easier it becomes. Yeah, the statements I can't and I am are way too powerful to just like, use all the time you're defining things like way too much you know and and you put yourself in a box so really peeling that back and working on uh the man in the mirror woman in the mirror whatever it's kind of our big thing and 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 you guys help with that in the in the program yeah Yeah, 100 percent. that's like such a big because the thing is and a lot of people don't see it this way but marketing sales building a business the tactical stuff i think that's actually pretty easy i think what's hard is like your biggest battle is yourself, the person in the mirror. That's always the biggest battle. 
right? Um, so, so getting out of your own way almost and then being able to, to do those things. Because I, like, I can hand anyone 100 customers like really easily, but most people can't handle that, right? And then it's like, are they not skilled? It's like, well, no, look at the pressure that comes with it, right? You start to fold under it almost. So um, you also have to mentally be ready to, to grow. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, uh, it kind of reminded me of a Mike Tyson quote. The Mike, he said, um, if you think $100 million is going to make you happy, you've never had $100 million. Yeah. I think yeah. it's such a great quote. Yeah. yeah. Right? No, it's true. And and that's what I, you're, you're going to quote Mike Tyson. I'm going to quote Miley Cyrus because that's more in my realm. I just, she says, you know. They're both fighters. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in the climb, right? It's in the journey. And that's what we try and teach everybody. Like, if you're not having fun right now building this client clientele, you're not going to have fun when you have a full book because I promise you it's going to be a bit more stressful in a different way. More money, more problems. Biggie wasn't lying. You, like, it, you got to get it together now or else that's you're either not going to get there or you're not going to be happy once you get there. I love that. Do you guys do some – so through the program, are you also doing, like – uh, financial advice or fi- or kind of uh, how to process a, a that? little bit within context like we're not financial advisors or CPAs sure, so sure. I like to be real clear about that um, but again like I'll beat the mindset thing down even with money coming in I mean I'm not gonna tell someone where to invest but um, if you don't have a good relationship well, more about your relationship with it than yeah. it is where you put it yeah. yeah yeah your relationship with it yeah well the first is to what you said is yeah don't make that your source of happiness I've made that mistake before that sucks um, and yeah, if like you're not ready for it, you'll lose it. I've had that happen too, you know. Um, do you think do, do you think that that's part of the process, or do you think that it's something that you can learn I, before? I think it's I think it's part of the process. Look, are there some people that have some financial success and they like do everything right? Sure, but like 99 percent of the times, at least my own journey and from what I've witnessed with so many others is you know you get that first bag and uh and you got to drop it right you might have to drop it a few times to learn like all right got to reel it in a little bit got to be a little bit more realistic and and be smart here um and so that's the first thing and then like once your relationship and perspective on it on it is good then you can do all the other you know investing being smart saving all of that and i think that just comes down to personal preference you know i mean if if you're uh just solo trying to travel the world you don't have kids you don't have a house you're gonna have a way different money game than someone who maybe has like three kids, debt to pay off, lives in a more expensive area, right? So it kind of comes down to context in terms of like, what do I do with my finances? Um, but I think the the perspective and relationship trumps all of that. I also think like what more so the finances that we're dealing with with like the inner circle students is like it's a big conversation around pricing. Like everyone says I want to make six figures, but then they're like how do I raise my prices? What do I do? And I think where there's a disconnect in the industry is organization. Like there's a big boom in independence right now, which I think is great, but I also think we're going to have a swing backwards too because I think a lot of people didn't realize what it is involved with running your own business, like you're a salon with yourself. So I think people don't really take into account like what are my expenses every single month, right? What do I need to, like how much, how much does my product cost? How much do I need to put away for taxes? What do I need to calculate here in order to figure out, okay, if I want to be making $10,000 a month, but my expenses are 4,000, that means if I want to make $10,000 a month, I need to be making 14. And if I'm available, you know, five days a week, eight hours a day, let me break that down. How much do I need to be bringing in hourly, right? So it's like putting them more in a less emotional state because we're a very emotional people, which is fine. I think it's what makes us good at what we do, but just realizing where that line is of this is business. You can be your creative, artistic, beautiful self behind the chair, but when your office hours are office hours, it's it's black and white. Numbers are pretty simple. And I think it's just getting people to realize that and then there's so much more clarity on that end, at least. Yeah. I love that. What what are what, Particularly you, Corey, you talk a lot about like mindsets, or you, or you certainly have today. Like, sure. Like what, what, what are you doing for your? Who's coaching you? <laughs> Me. No, yeah. Right. No. No. <laughs> seriously, Jenna. Um, I don't know. I do. I do like a, a decent spread, I guess, of personal development. Um, but I have my. He's own. walked over coals, hasn't he, Jenna? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't no, know if I've not. walked over coals. He definitely would yet. never. He's scared to get a shot. Like, no. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hate needles. Um, that's why I only have one tattoo for now. <laughs> you know. And it's crooked because you couldn't sit still. So you wanted to leave. Um, yeah, I mean, I've had like various mentors throughout the year, years, and and all of that stuff. And I think that's important. But something that's really helped me like mellow out and stay balanced, at least over the past few years, especially with growing and just having so many customers and helping a bunch of people. Um, it's just a lot of the same things I preach, which is like a lot of uh, internal self-awareness and like thoughts rolling through. And then uh, a good quote that I heard from somebody, I think it was last year, that really helped me get like very mellow and controlled with my emotional state was what's real versus what do you feel? And now I kind of categorize everything into those two. And um, we like that blends together for a lot of people. Like, what do I feel versus what's real? And a lot of times those two um, aren't equivalent, right? And so you got to be careful. Uh, so really just a lot of internal self-awareness, monitoring my own thoughts. What do I think? What new beliefs are trying to come into play? Um, and yeah, and, and just not letting the highs be high and the lows be low. So kind of keeping like a, because like in business, it's just, even like with results is like a roller coaster, but then when we attach too much of our identity or happiness or whatever to that roller coaster, then that's what our life starts to look like, right? And so I, I actually have a graph that I drew and you just draw a line straight through the middle and your goal is to keep yourself in the middle, right? So if you had your best month, your worst month, whatever, you gotta fight to stay on that middle line. Um, Cause it's, it's, it's like the, the highs are what get you honestly, right? It's that's when you go up higher, like, oh man, I feel really good. But now like everything that goes up must come down. So now you just set yourself up to crash, right? And so like, I guess after a thousand times of that happening, I've learned, all right, best month, best day, best week, whatever, just another day, right? And so. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of like the analogy of, of gambling, you win, and you're gonna chase that win, you know? So when you high, you're gonna chase that high, and, and you might not have- You're not gonna always have it. No, Yeah. but you'll chase it. it yeah. It's never this, it's- Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, right? I mean, like the stock market. Yeah, it, keeps, yeah. it keeps growing, but it yeah, just- Yeah, I had a, another good one I heard from a mentor, which also really like helped me step back, was um, if you look at like a sales chart or a stock chart or a revenue chart, it, it looks like a heart attack graph. So if you like attach yourself to that, like, dude, you're in for a whirlwind of hurt eventually because you're going to be going up and down with that. And like literally your, you know, your dopamine, your serotonin, oxytocin, all of those chemicals are going up and down. That's a whole other topic for another day. But learning how your um, the chemicals in your brain like influence yourself, um, learning how to pull dopamine from other places that like are not business because that becomes dangerous again because you have that sales chart, heart attack graph type and effect. That's something that we're passionate about too, is we're very passionate about time management with people because I started as someone, I'm like super ADD brain, I'm like everywhere all the time. And I'm like, I just go with the flow. That was always my statement. And what I realized was one, I wasn't being productive. Two, like I didn't have time for me because I was always waiting till the last minute or I was crunching and then I'd be like laying in bed at night, like what, did I, what didn't I do today? And I'm like doing lists in my brain. Sure. What we teach people is like, plan out your week ahead, plan out exactly what you need to do, plan out your marketing time, plan out your, go to the grocery store, whatever it is, and now you know your free time. So now we block off all of our free time and it's like, okay, no work during this time. And that's work-life balance. And again, up front seems like more work, but I promise you will be so much happier when you actually have that dedicated time for you because it's so important as stylists, like you have to, we give so much. We give, 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 give. And it's what makes you good at what you do. But you have to fill your own cup. You can't pour from empty. So. Mm. I love a, lot, a lot of nuggets in this thing. Yeah, this you conversation. ain't kidding. Uh, back to, uh, back, you were talking about the dopamine thing. Sure. And um, I've told this story a couple times on the podcast, but I think it's relevant here. Sure. Is my, um, my nephew's a Navy SEAL, right? Oh, wow. So he went through SEAL training. Badass. And like, he's a badass. <laughs> Um, but he, uh, in week four is called Hell Week, right? Yep. And it's like the most brutal kind of like training that, that, that these guys go through. And yeah. they sleep like four hours in a week or something. It's, it's, it's absolutely yeah. insane. So after he finished training, I was totally setting him up to like brag about Hell Week, you know, which he wouldn't, but that's a whole other story. But um, I, go, I go, dude, what was the hardest week? And I thought for sure he'd say Hell Week. And he said, it was actually the week after Hell Week. 
And he says, because what happens is that you're, you're running so lean to get through Hell Week that the next week you literally don't have the chemicals yeah. to be happy. You literally don't have the chemicals to even be able to like exist because you're just like, you're so spent all over. Yeah. And he said it was the only week where the guys fought. And these are also like type A guys, you know, yeah. most of them. Oh, yeah. And they're not allowed to work out. They're not allowed, you know, their body has to recover, but so does their brain. And he said that was the toughest, toughest week, which was like, so shocking to kind of hear, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and on a little note, we've talked about this too. On a little note, like when we do like sh weekends like this, yeah. I know that it takes me two or three days to recover, but we run at such a high level. I think our dopamine just drops, not completely drop out like yeah. it would for a seal. But oh, yeah. I certainly, but I understood that. And I go, oh, okay, I'm tired because, not just because we didn't sleep, not just because of that, but our, our dopamine is running low as well. Yeah. 100%. Well, you, you see people, they go to like classes or events like this, whatever, you get all hyped up. The Galler guy on stage is like, you know, go home, do that. Even if you, even like a podcast at a smaller scale, but you hear it, um, and that's why events are always so interesting. Like everyone's all fired up, and then they leave, and then within like 24 to 48 hours, where the where'd the fire go? Which is also why I say like don't rely on motivation. Like build just habits. internal evidence through habits and behavior. Yeah. No, and that's why like what we teach, we have people with us for months, years at a time, because it's like why stop the thing that's helping you get there? Why? get further away from the campfire if you will like people want to do i call it the we call it the mindset paradox where it's like you get some wins you get a little bit of money your dopamine's high you're like oh good like i got it it's fine and you think it's just gonna be there but it's like the next day starts at zero like we say every day is a new day so it's like you have to keep proving it and what happens is you're on that high and then you experience that low and the low feels so much worse than it needs to because that low is almost inevitable so again be proactive not reactive know that it's going to be there and do the things beforehand so that instead of being a, a, a serious drop just a little dip and then yeah. and then you're good i love yeah, that you see that in, in uh in athletes all the time oh yeah you know and yep. and the, the, you think all that money and all that success and all that fame and all that recognition is always going to be there and then one day uh it's gone and and they feel incomplete they feel lost they feel uh, you know, what happened, it's, but it's so true. Yeah, no, it is. That's why it's also important. I like to say, like, when you take more control of your clientele, when you take more control over who's coming in, you're taking more control of your business. And you hear the term, like, work-life balance a lot. I like to think of it as, like, why does there have to be so much separation? Like, why can't we just make it so that we do enjoy it, so that we don't have to be like, I can't do this anymore. Of course those days are going to be there. We have long days, but mentally take back control over it so that you can find joy just as much joy there as you do in your in your off time you know and i think just having being in the driver's seat that's why we use that term because so many people feel like they're on the hamster wheel like it's happening to them when it's like no like you are holding the xbox controller of your life so when you take back control that's when you're going to feel so much happier there because it's not just like a waiting game of am i going to be successful will i it's like, no well, i think i think thing. what you said i think that there's so much reward in being proactive so you know, when, when you're an active member in your life and you're not just waiting for life to happen yes like like I mean, the biggest changes in my life is absolutely, positively, without a doubt, when I've been proactive in my life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know. Other, otherwise, you become, and then like people actually say, you become like a victim yeah. of your circumstances. Of because, yourself. You're a victim of yourself. Yeah. Exactly. That's all it is. Yeah. And like one of our phrases is like, um, you know, the world doesn't happen to you. You happen to the world. Just pick a side, you know. And it's not to say that people don't go through hardship. It's not to say that like things aren't difficult but it's just the way that you choose to to view it you know that's awesome so where can guys find you where can they kind of uh locate you instagram i'm at jenna puzio hair you can find us at fillyourbooks.com is our youtube channel fill your books edu yeah just type in fill your books on youtube you'll you'll see us i got a ton of edu free education on there too feel free to send me a dm i'm more than happy to chat with people that's awesome yeah. I, I could talk to you guys for hours because <laughs> you're both very intriguing people thank you, you know <laughs> and I, and I really i'm 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 getting off because we have to get off, but it's not because I, there's no want here, you know? We could do another one. It's fine. That's yeah. fine. We could talk that's for okay. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's think about, because we do these segments called small talks. Sure. And pick, like, subject points. Yeah. And uh, that's going to give uh, added value to the listener and uh, kind of, like, 
kind of yeah. I mean, I think it'd be a great uh, so, so. conversation. For it, sure. It, basically, we hand you the mic for twenty minutes and say educate us. Sure, right? yeah. we'll do and it. Then, and then we can oh, do that, yeah. and we can do like a series of like four or something. Cool. Let's cool. Let's we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that in a second. Only reason we we're jumping off is because it's been an hour. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. It's a quick hour. Yeah. Time flies. Goodbye, right? Fun. Yeah. It's so yeah. crazy. Jenna and Corey from Fill Your Fill Your Books. Yes. Oh yeah. Thank you very very much for joining us on Yo. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating, and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.